Good evening. About three years ago now, I made a video called NO! Historical inaccuracy in movies doesn't matter, a response to Brandon F., in which I argued that history nerds need to chill out a bit when criticizing historical fiction. I made it in response to Brandon's first video in his series reviewing the film The Patriot, which is a, to be sure, a very, very, very bad portrayal of the American War of Independence. Well, I've since changed my opinion, partly due to the fact that in the time since this video I directed a historical feature film of my own called The Sudbury Devil. I went to great lengths to make it as accurate as possible within the considerably limited confines of our low budget, which honestly made me realize that movies and shows with 20 or 50 times more resources than I had really have no excuse. So now I'm going to respond to my past self and come to Brandon's defense. If you don't know who Brandon F. is, I do recommend his channel. There are a lot of fun and informative videos on there. He's basically a mass hole tour guide with a closet full of costumes who stands in front of a bookshelf talking about history. As a mass hole former tour guide with a closet full of costumes. Here's my costume closet. It's a little messy right now. Sorry, but we got some chain mail, you know, some severed limbs and stuff. And oh shit. Oh, don't look at that one. Don't look at that one. Don't look at that one. <laughs> and who talks about history in front of his considerably larger bookshelf, I feel like I'm uniquely qualified to offer a counterpoint to Brandon's claim that historical accuracy in movies matters. The bookshelf is my penis. So this is fun and a little bit cringy to revisit because this sort of thing is just so shockingly, jarringly different from the sort of shit I do now. It's like it's from another channel entirely. I do like how I'm wearing just the farbiest outfit possible, though. That's a clever touch. And by the way, I'm not trying to defame or criticize Brandon personally here. I like the kid. He's got a passion. He works hard at it. And I feel like if he and I got into a conversation about historiography and historical interpretation, we would actually agree on most things. He also looks damn fine in his red coat uniform. I mean, I'm not trying to make it weird or anything, but uh, I'd swipe right. Still would. But when it comes to this claim, some people say, yes indeed, that they became interested in the American War of Independence by virtue of a film like The Patriot, and that makes it A-OK -okay in the end. Again, I disagree with this sentiment immensely. Brandon, you are precisely wrong. First of all, you can't disagree with someone's personal experiences. These people are telling you that they got interested in history because of movies. You don't get to tell them that that's not what happened. Okay, but he never did deny it. This is an extraordinarily uncharitable critique on the part of my past self. And worse, I'm taking what he said out of context. If you go back and watch the original video, he clarifies that point very precisely. You know, you start sort of like at a, at a baseline of knowledge. You start at a certain level of knowledge and, and maybe like you gain a couple of points of knowledge based on the thing that you learned about. Um, the, thing, the, the thing that got you interested in the time period. Say, say you go to a reenactment, and you know, you, you, some things in the reenactment are wrong, but some things are right, and overall, you know, you start off with like a little basic idea of what it's all about. Watching a movie like The Patriot doesn't give you a couple of bonus points as like to, to set you on your way. It starts you at a negative. It starts you at a dramatic negative. Actually, from your perspective, it should probably be this way, but you get the idea. Like, it starts you off right off the bat with, ne with, with false like stereotypes with biases about the time period, about what everything is about. And he's absolutely right. Uh, now you could argue that it's not really that important in the grand scheme of things that the public at large have a working understanding of 18th century colonial life. But in the case of the Patriots specifically, that's almost beside the point. The movie is a flagrant piece of pro-war American nationalist propaganda, and I don't think you can reasonably argue that something like that is just an innocent bit of fun. I agree with you that the Patriot is propaganda. It is shameless American nationalist propaganda. But here's where you and I differ, Brandon. Darling. Sweet Lips. May I call you Sweet Lips? There's a distinction between nationalist, or in the case of gods and generals, racist propaganda, you know, the sorts of things that inspire people to shoot up a Walmart, and little trivial historical facts that really don't matter all that much. One thing I learned in a big way while shooting my movie was that the Sudbury Devil is in the details, right? Niggling little things add up very, very, very quickly. Even if you, as a filmmaker, have absolutely no intention on representing your time period accurately, you still need to micromanage the details of your production design, or to use the historical term, your material culture, to sell the authenticity of your setting to your audience on a very basic level. And if you're going to go to all that trouble, why not just do it correctly and make it as accurate as you possibly can? 
Historical people's material culture served practical and symbolic purposes in their lives, exactly like ours does. Production design in period films is never going to feel more convincing and lived in to an audience than when it's as historically accurate as possible, because in the past, people actually did live that way. So you're much closer to finding the truth within the imaginary circumstances of your story. You and I, we're nerds, man. But most people are not like us. Most people think history is boring. Answer me honestly, man. Have you ever been reading a rigorously researched, peer-reviewed academic history and went, Can you honestly say that's never happened to you, even as a hardcore history buff? <laughs> Again, Brandon never said a single solitary goddamn thing about dry academic history being the only way that anyone should consume information. In fact, his whole channel is dedicated to producing entertaining and consumable public history. This point just smacks of anti-intellectualism, and it's kind of gross. Film and television, on the other hand? Man, they're the storytelling media of our age. And we are storytelling animals. Academic study is an intellectual exercise. Storytelling is an emotional exercise. And if there's one thing that propaganda can teach us, it's that you don't reach people by engaging with their intellect. You reach them by playing on their emotions. So here is a valuable little nugget about storytelling being the key to education, which I still wholeheartedly believe. Educators do need to be mindful of the fact that most of their intended audience quite simply does not give a fuck, and need to be given a compelling reason to engage with the material. People learn the best when they're spellbound by a good story. I mean, shit, I've made a career out of attempting to do just that. As both a filmmaker and an educator, I have sometimes gotten frustrated with history nerds who write off good movies as the worst thing that ever happened just because they get some details details wrong. But first off, Brandon is far from the worst offender in this regard, and approaches these things with a lot of good humor. The whole pedantic reviews shtick has always been a little tongue-in-cheek. And second, the filmmaking is not what concerns these historians, not at all. If you want to see a good movie praised for its artistry, then you want a film critic, not a historian. These are two different intellectual spheres, and I'm not sure why my past self is insisting on shoving them together. Chances are really good that if you have internet access and a little bit of an interest in history, you already know that The Patriot and Braveheart and movies like that are historically inaccurate. Saying such and such a movie is inaccurate is not exactly a fresh hot take at this point. Okay, but correcting these misconceptions caused by movies is still an uphill struggle. Like, in the video I mentioned the large view counts of YouTube history channels who review period pieces as part of their content. But their reach is dwarfed by many orders of magnitude by the audiences of these huge Hollywood movies. A million people might have seen the YouTube video tearing Braveheart to shreds, but a billion people have seen Braveheart. I'm not trying to discourage you from making your epic patriot takedown. On the contrary, I'm excited for it. But I also don't want you to fall into the trap that I myself have fallen into on occasion. Thinking that a filmmaker, or the world for that matter, owes you anything. What the fuck does that even mean? How is that relevant to anything? And my advice for history buffs the world over, well, a certain type of history buff, is that knowledge of useless trivia does not constitute a personality. So, as my past self clarifies in the video, this isn't meant toward Brandon personally, but if I'm totally honest, I kind of did have his audience in mind when I wrote those words, and again, I think that's a pretty unfair charge to level at them when there are so many worse and more toxic history nerd communities out there. But that said, there is some truth to what I'm saying here, right? I mean, the sword bros of the internet would much rather play with their Battle of Hastings miniatures than they would grapple with historical materialism. As we've talked about before on the channel, this is sometimes an ideological thing. Obsessing about the military tactics of the Civil War, for example, can be a smokescreen to avoid exploring uncomfortable truths about why the war was fought in the first place. It's also a masculine insecurity thing, I think. A lot of these pimply nerds pine for an imaginary ideal of martial historical machismo, so they fixate on the minutia of historical uniforms, weapons, and gear because, as they say, the clothes make the man. I know this because that was me in middle school and in high school. And you know, if you wrote your dissertation on sword trivia, more power to you. But I think for most of us, we start off as kids interested in cool weapons and armor and stuff. And then for a lot of us as adults, that interest kind of evolves into maybe a bit 
something a bit more serious, a bit more grown up, whether it's economic or political or social history or whatever. But others never really mature in that way. They never really graduate past the kind of surface level, oh my God, Hannibal was such a genius. And some of those people, I say some, I say this may be the respects, some of those people can be a little frustrating sometimes. But that is an entirely separate issue from what Brandon is talking about. And in that way, my past self is misrepresenting his argument and implicitly painting him as a sort of person that he most certainly is not. And going off of that theme of putting aside childish things, I think there's a reason I felt I needed to come to cinema's defense here, which is that I had a huge fondness for historical epics in my formative years. I have an emotional attachment to these kinds of movies, and so maybe I can get a little too defensive when people criticize them. Braveheart is a great example of this. It was a huge influence on me as a kid, and it is an exceptionally well-made film. But it's also kind of dumb. Like, it's not a smart movie. It's got good guys and bad guys, virtuous women and warrior men, and an inspirational theme about sticking to your principles and persevering against all odds. It's at no point meaningfully poignant, self-reflective, or morally ambiguous. Now, not everything has to be a grim George R. R. Martin novel, to be sure, but even as an escapist romance, Braveheart is a childish story with a superficial worldview. It reveals about as much about the human condition as a motel painting. Braveheart's historical inaccuracy isn't the reason that it's dumb, but it is a symptom of its stupidity. And this is the crux of this whole discussion. Historical accuracy doesn't matter, but truth and humanity do. And the very best way to represent the truth and the humanity of a historical era is to represent it accurately. A story is truth under imaginary circumstances. And as a filmmaker, an actor, a writer, whatever, you're always chasing truth. Like Hamlet said, the purpose of playing, whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as twere, the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age and body of the time, his form and pressure. To hold the mirror up to nature. That's what it's all about. Movies are illusions, right? Shadows on the wall. And your job as a filmmaker is to make the audience forget, on some visceral, animal level, that it's fake. When the audience sees the truth in a story, the more they buy into the reality of its illusions and become emotionally invested. I do not buy into the reality of the illusions of the Patriot. I watch that film and I do not see a soldier named Benjamin Martin leading a dogged resistance against British oppressors. I see an idiot writer with a head full of American mythology playing with paper-thin characters as though they were action figures. The same with Gods and Generals or any of these wildly inaccurate bad movies. They're bungled magic tricks. So, Brandon, you were right. You are vindicated. I'm not sorry that I made that video because you were very gracious about it and became a big champion of my channel and my work after that. But in our great cosmic struggle of accuracy versus inaccuracy, I would like to officially concede. You have vanquished me. I offer you my sword in surrender. I am now unarmed and completely at your mercy. That's right, you could do anything you like with me. Anything at all, and I wouldn't resist. I am your prisoner, your slave. You could take me manfully by the shoulders and throw me down onto your rough soldier's cot. You could brush your lips lightly over my nipples, causing me to break out in goose flesh. You could even unsheathe your throbbing manhood and plunge it deep into the- Camera is rolling. Marker. Earlier this week, Brandon asked me a video called, Is There Anything Redeeming Here? The Patriot... Is There Anything Redeeming Here? The Patriot Review Part Zero, Everything Good and Why It Matters. It's the first in a planned series of videos tearing apart that movie for its many historical inaccuracies. <clears throat> Earlier this week, Brandon F. released a video called, Is There Anything Fuck. Redeeming Here? The Patriot Review, Part Zero. Everything good and why it matters. 
Earlier this week, Brandon F. released a video called, Is There Anything Redeeming Here? Everything Good and Why It Fuck. 